it's time to dive into real HTML code. In this video, we'll learn about the global structure of an HTML page, which will contain our content. Now that we have the history lesson out of the way, it's time to learn about some HTML tags. We're going to learn about tags that deal with the global structure of HTML documents. Now, here I have the browser Google Chrome open, but you can go ahead and use whatever browser you feel comfortable in. And I'm going to be creating my HTML document in the text editor, TextMate. Again, you can use whatever text editor you'd like, but this is the one that I'm going to use. Now, first, I'm going to create what's called a doc type. And to do that, we'll go ahead and open HTML tags. We'll put an exclamation point inside. We'll type out the word doc type, followed by a space, and then the letters HTML. This is what's called a document type. Now, there are lots of different doc types available for creating different types of HTML documents. However, this doc type is what's called an HTML5 doc type. We're going to mostly be learning about HTML4 tags. However, these HTML4 tags can still be used with HTML5. So we're going to go ahead and save our document. And I've saved my document as index.html. The file name index.html is very common. And when you name something index.html and put it in a folder on a web server, the web server will commonly direct to index.html directly and bypass any other file names. We'll get more into the actual file structure of websites a little bit later on. Now that we have our doc type, we're ready to move on to the HTML tag. So we'll skip down here a little bit and we'll type HTML. And inside of it, we're going to use what's called an attribute. So we'll type the word lang for language, an equal sign, and inside quotes, we're going to put en for English. Then we'll go ahead and close our HTML tag. The HTML tag wraps the entire document and it's where we'll be putting all the rest of our tags. We've used the language attribute to specify the language of the page, which in this case will be English. Again, the HTML tags will wrap all the rest of your tags on your page, but the doc type should always come first because it's a very special tag. Inside of our HTML tags, we're going to create what's called a head tag. So we'll create our opening head tag, and then we'll create our closing head tag, and we'll put a space between them so we can put things inside of the head tag. The head tag is the header of the document. Now this won't actually render on the page, but it's used to include meta information like meta tags, style sheets, and JavaScript. Next, we'll go ahead and include a meta tag. So we'll type out the word meta. And again, we're going to go ahead and use an attribute. In this case, we're going to use the char set attribute followed by an equal sign, then double quotes, and we're going to go ahead and type UTF-8. Char set means character set, and in this case, we're using the character set UTF-8, and this is the character set that you'll want to use 99% of the time that you're creating websites. If you're using a different character set, you probably have a very specific reason for doing so, and you probably know why. The character set meta information is optional, but just like setting the language to English, it's a good idea to include. So we'll go ahead and save that. And you'll notice that the meta tag is very similar to the doc type tag in that it doesn't have a closing tag to pair with it. That's because the meta tag is what's called a void element. There's no closing tag because there's nothing to put inside of the meta tag. The content and the tag are one and the same. 
We have most of the tags that we'll need to create our global page structure, but there's still a few more to learn. In the next video, we'll finish things up. Yeah.